Hi folks, uh, so this is resizing arrays and uh, global array de declarations. Um, this, this is going to be our last little lesson in arrays before we get started with some crazier stuff. Um, so uh, here's what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn how to, again, use arrays. We're just sort of learning more of the details of arrays uh, to store all kinds of data in one, one structure instead of a bunch of different variables. And today, mostly we're going to learn how to resize arrays at runtime, which means while the program is running, while preserving the data that's in the array already. You'll see what that means in a second. So to do that, I want to start by reviewing the difference between local and global variables. That's just a quick review, something we already know, and that applies to arrays as well. There can be local arrays and global arrays. Um, and then we'll talk about the problem with global arrays and how to declare them. You may have run into this already. And then we'll learn about a new command, which is called redim, and then also this other thing called preserve um, that will help us with this, this problem that's going to arise. So let's talk about local and global variables first. This is a review. So where and how a variable is declared is determined, it determines how long it will live in the system's memory. So we've seen this before. Depending on where you declare a variable, it's only usable in certain spaces. So if you declare it locally, which means you declare it inside a subroutine, then it dies after that subroutine finishes. So if I put it inside a subroutine, you know, between private sub and end sub for, say, clicking this button on here, I'll click the button, it'll make a variable, I can put something in it, but once that uh, subroutine is, is finished and the button's work is done, then the variable goes goodbye. Okay, on the other hand, if I declare at the top of the program this variable, then it's available to all the subroutines, and that's called a global variable. And that dies when the program ends, it lives forever, basically. So when I click the button now, appear, uh, you know, I can put hello into my thing, but you'll notice that the box, this variable, gets declared before I click the button. Right? I click the button and I put data in the box, but then when the subroutine is done, my variable hangs out. So local variables are good for quick temporary things. They don't take, us up, take up as much memory. But global variables, on the other hand, are important if we want to hang on to a value for a long time till after a button or a subroutine is done. Okay, so we already knew that, and I want to think about how that applies to global arrays. Okay, so we know declaring an array is just like declaring a, a regular function, right? But we have this problem where... Uh, if, if you declare a global variable at the top of the code, you might not know how big the array should be yet. And let me show you an example of what I mean by that. So here's a, here's a code, a uh, piece of the, the project that we did. I think this is assignment, I want to say, three or two, uh, where you press the button and get a bunch of random numbers, right? Let me just walk you through what this code is for a second. The way I have it now... Uh, I have it so that this, uh, this, uh, oops, I misspelled integer. This uh, numbers array is being declared uh, locally inside the button one subroutine, right? It's between private sub and end sub. I'm declaring an array called numbers that is, if you recall, one less than the text box that they put in, right? They put in 10. I want numbers to go from 0 to 9, so I get 0 to 9 random numbers in the array. And again, I've, I've declared this locally. Because here it is inside the subroutine. That means I've declared it locally. And then down here, the details are not that important. I'm putting uh, random numbers into the array, and then I'm spitting it out uh, onto, the, onto the form. And this works. This is a, basically the just a, oh, this doesn't work because I must have screwed up something down here. Where is my problem here? So I'm going to just delete this real quick, or I'll, I'll comment it out. And hit play. And let's say I'll put 10 in, we should get 10 random numbers on the right. Good. Okay. So that works, right? And that's this, uh, this is a local variable right here. Okay. Now what I want to do is, uh, this is not part of the original project. Um, <clears throat> I want another button here that's going to get the sum of an array, f the array for me. Okay. But the problem is, if I declare this numbers down here, uh, uh, inside this subroutine for the button one, at the end of this button subroutine, say goodbye to that array. It doesn't live globally, it only lives locally because I declared it inside here. Okay, and that means that if I come down here to a, <coughs> excuse me, a button subroutine, and I try to use numbers, I'm going to get an error. Because it says numbers is not declared, and that's true. It is declared, but it's only, excuse me, it's only declared within this subroutine. Okay, because it's a local variable. So down here in the other button, its subroutine, there is no numbers. Mmm. Mmm. So how we can't use numbers anywhere else if we have it locally declared. Okay, if I put it up here, though, and, and make it global, now it's global, right? 
The problem is this, if I try to run this code, I'm gonna get an error immediately, okay? And this one's a really confusing, something about invalid operation exception and how it's unhandled, forget it. The problem here is that when we, did, when we have stuff up here outside of a subroutine, we can't refer to textbox one dot text up here and do math up here and things like that. It's because this happens right when the program starts, right? And so the person hasn't put anything into the text box yet, like the 10 for the, for the array to go from zero to nine. Okay, so that's not gonna work either. Now that makes it tricky. How can I declare a global variable, a global array, if I don't know what size the array is going to be before the program begins, right? If I know that there's gonna be 10 items in the array, I can do that. I can say dim numbers nine as integer, because it goes from zero to nine, that's 10, okay? And that would work, okay? Except that the problem is, oh, numbers that is, the problem is that maybe I don't know it's going to be nine, maybe it's going to be a hundred, maybe it's going to be a thousand, and I won't know until what's called runtime when the user puts some kind of number in or something like that. So this isn't going to work for me either. So let's see how we're going to do that, how we're going to deal with that. So you can actually declare a variable without size, and it looks like this. Okay, you can say dim my array with just the parentheses as an integer. If you're going to do that, you can do dim attendance or whatever uh, array you want, as a string, and if you just use these parentheses without anything inside, in, inside it, that's still declaring it globally, right? But the, the, the difference is it doesn't get a size here in the beginning, and that's okay. We're gonna give it a size later, okay? And we're gonna learn how to do that in a moment, okay? Alternatively, you could give it with just one element. You could say, just make it, you know, have its first one, and then later on we can add more elements to it. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so the key mo thing here to, to note is that I can say dim numbers as an integer, just like that. Okay, and later on, we're going to learn in a second, I can resize numbers to be exactly the size that I want it to be. I can resize an array even though it's declared without any size at all. Or I could also do this, put a zero in there. Okay, that will make it have one box. It's, a, it's, a, it's an array with one element, the zeroth element. Okay, and that's okay. Uh, but uh, we're going to learn how to resize it presently. Okay, and to do that, we're going to use a command called redim, okay, which sort of redeclares an array, right? So we, we use it like this. We say redim, and then we say the array name, and then in parentheses, we give it its new upper bound, its new highest index. So let me show you how that works. I can say dim my array is zero as an integer, or dim attendance zero as a string, right, like we did before. And then I can let a whole bunch of other code happen, and somewhere down in the subroutine, right, this could be global, but it doesn't have to be. But somewhere down somewhere else, I can say redim my array 40 or redim attendance text box one dot text. And that will change the size of the array to whatever number I've, I've put in here. So before it only had one element, the zeroth element. When, once I say redim my array 40, now it has zero to 40. Okay, so now it has 41 elements. Or I can even use a text box. Let's say I put 10 in the text box. Before attendance just had one element, the zeroth element. Now after this redim statement, Attendance has, if I put 10 in there, 0 to 10, so it has 11 elements. So redim is an awesome thing. It helps us to change the size of an array. Let's look at this visually. If I say dim attendance 3 as a string, that's going to make me a whole bunch of boxes, 0 through 3, so that's four boxes in my attendance array, and somewhere in the code I can put information in here, uh, and, and, and that's all well and good. Now the problem becomes, if I want to redim it, I can add another box to the code, by saying redim attendance of four, and watch what happens. Bang, I get a whole nother box here, and now my array goes from zero to four. I have five elements in it. That's what redim does. You'll also notice that uh, the, the data inside zero to three disappeared, and that's a problem. When we use redim, okay, it destroys all of the data inside your array. It sort of makes a brand new array. Now there's a way around that, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but that's important to note. If you just say redim attendance or redim and then the variable, it's going to clear the array and not keep the stuff that's there. Okay, so if we wanna keep the data, we have to use something called redim preserve. Okay, so instead of uh, what we did before, it's gonna be almost exactly the same. I say dim attendance three as a string, that gives me four boxes, zero through three. And again, somewhere else in the code, I can put some information in here. But let's say I want to make attendance one bigger. Now I want to make it attendance of four, okay? Instead of saying redim attendance of four, I could do that, but it would destroy all this information that I have in there, which I don't want. I want to keep that. I can say redim preserve attendance four, and that will keep all my stuff in there and add another box. 
Okay. Now, redim preserve is a particularly expensive thing to do, and what I mean by expensive is it's not easy for the computer to do. If you have ten thousand uh, elements in the array, it's going to take the computer a long time to do it. And by a long time, I mean like a millisecond. Um, so what I'm saying is that you can do this, but it's not the best thing to do in the world. If there's some way to figure out how big your array should be beforehand, you should try to do it. But it will certainly work. You can say redim preserve attendance of four, and that will change the size of this array and keep the stuff in there without destroying it as long as you have this preserve statement. All right, so I want to show you how that would work in our, in our program we were looking at a second ago. Here I say dim, and this, I'm just going to say dim numbers as an integer like that with just parentheses in it and no size at all. And then when they press the button, now, so that makes it, by the way, declared globally, right? I've said up here at the top, numbers is a global variable. Uh, that means it can be used anywhere. And then in here, I want to change the size of numbers, redim numbers to text box uh, one dot text minus one. So this is from the, the random numbers thing. If I put in a 10, I want numbers to go from zero to nine. And that's why that's there. And that's it. I don't need a preserve in this case because when they press the button, I'm going to put all new random numbers in there. I don't even have to worry about it. But what's nice is that I'm not getting an error when I use numbers down here in another subroutine because I've declared it globally. Okay, so that's redim. It's pretty awesome. I want to show you one more example using redim preserve. Okay, uh, real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a button here and I'm going to make it one single text box, or I'm actually going to make two text boxes. Here's the first text box and here's the second. This one's going to be multi line. And I'm going to make it nice and big. So here's what I'm going to do. This should be pretty cool. I am going to um, make a list of numbers. Add to list. Okay. So when I press this button, whatever number is in here is going to get added to my array and spit out into this into this text box. So let's do that. This is text box one, and this is text box two. So when I press the button, uh, first I'm going to declare a global variable, which is going to be my numbers. Okay. And I don't know how many numbers there's going to be yet, so I'm just going to let it chill. Uh, and these are going to be integers. Okay. And I'll tell you what, I'm also going to dim a variable called counter, which is going to tell me how many numbers I've done so far. Okay, And I, when the form loads, right in the very beginning, I want counter to be equal to zero. Okay, So I double clicked on the form, got the form load subroutine. So right when we start, counter is equal to zero. And I've declared two global variables, counter, which I can use anywhere. It starts at zero. And numbers, which is an array, which currently has no size, so I need to size it. Okay, now. When they press the button, what I want to have happen is I want to change the size of my array, redim, right, numbers, okay, and counter is telling me how many things there are so far. So right now in the beginning, counter is zero, so I can say counter, okay. So that's going to change the size of numbers so that it's the size of whatever counter is. Right now, counter is zero the first time, but the next time I want it to be one, right? So every time I press the button, I'll say counter equals counter plus one. All right, let me show you what I've done uh, in general. Okay, I've declared two variables. Uh, one's an array called numbers, and it's going to store a bunch of integers. It has no size right now. And I've also declared counter, which is an integer, and it starts out at zero when the form loads. Okay, so I press the button for the first time, and that changes the size of my array, redims it to whatever counter is. In the beginning, it's zero. And then we say, all right, counter is counter plus one after that. So now I've changed the size of my array to have zero as the top index, so now it has one element. And now counter is equal to one. Now I press the button a second time, right? Counter is still one, so I redim the size of numbers. So its highest index is one. That means it has two boxes now, and counter gets increased to two. Okay, then I press the button again. Now we're resizing the the array so that it goes up to two, and then counter gets increased again. So now it's three. So that this means every time I press the button, I'll be increasing the size of the numbers array uh, by one. Interesting way of doing that. And then all I have to do is put numbers of counter is equal to text box one dot text. Okay, and so what's happening then? Whatever counter is, it starts out at, uh, oh, I need to put this after that. Okay, so uh, counter starts at zero, we make it so that the array size is zero, then we say numbers of zero is whatever's in the text box, and then we make counter go up. Right now counter is one, I press the button again, we redim numbers so that numbers goes up to one, so we have zero and one. Numbers of zero, uh, we put stuff in before, but now since counter is one, numbers of one is the text box, and so on. 
Okay, and so this means that, and let me after all this is done, uh, for i equals, oops, i got caps lock on i equals zero to u bound of the numbers array. Well, this is going to loop through the array. I want to have text box two equal text box two dot text. This is just going to spit out uh, the numbers from numbers. And BB, I'm not going to go over that because you guys have seen that a million times now. Okay, so let's try it. If I put in four and hit it, here we go. We got four in there. If I put in five and hit it, oh, what's going on? Uh, first of all, let me clear the text box. When I press the button, if I want the text box to be cleared, I just do that. Anyway, if I put four in here, here we go. Then if I put five in there, oh, now I got zero and five. That's weird. If I put nine in here, when I have zero, zero, nine, it looks like the other ones are being destroyed and not being kept. If I add another element, there should be four, but oh, the nine just disappeared too. And the problem is I'm changing the size of my array, but I forgot to write preserve next to the redim, right? So that to make sure that every time I change the size, my numbers from before are being kept. Let's watch again. Four, let's put in a six, let's put in a 10, let's put in a 22, whoops, and so on. So let me review this code one more time and then we'll be all done. We're starting at the top by declaring two global variables. Uh, one of them is an array, it's called numbers, and it's going to store a bunch of integers. The other one is a counter that's going to just keep track of how many times I've pressed the button. Okay? Uh, and in the very beginning, I've pressed the button zero times, so when the form loads, counter is zero. All right? That's the idea. Now when I press the button, first thing I'm going to clear text box two, which is going to clear this text box so there's no other junk in there for starters. Okay? And then I'm going to use the, our new redim statement. I'm going to preserve the stuff that's there. I'm going to say, all right, redim, preserve the array, make sure we don't destroy the stuff. We're going to change its size to whatever counter is. In the very beginning, counter is zero, but every time I press the button, I'm making counter a little bit bigger. And so that means that uh, the next time it'll be one. I'll be changing the size of the array so its maximum uh, index is one. And then counter is two, so the highest index will be two, and so on. So I'm always increasing the size of numbers by one. And then each time I press the button also, I'm putting the value from the first text box, which is the number I put in the text box, uh, into numbers at the counter thing. So the first time it's zero, right? We redim the size of numbers so that its maximum index is zero. That's one element. And then we're saying numbers of zero is whatever's in the text box. Then counter gets increased to one. We come back around again. I press the button again. We say, all right, change the size of the numbers array so that its maximum thing is one. And I say, all right, numbers of one is a text box, whatever is in the text box. And now counter is equal to two, and so on and so on and so on. I can do that over and over again. And then this loop here just spits the information out in the text box so we can see it. So hopefully you're getting the idea here that we can use redim preserve to change the size of our array. And if we use this sort of counter method with this counter equals counter plus one, we can increase the size of the array by one each time. All right, so that does it for today. We learned a little bit more about arrays, specifically how to resize them at runtime while we're still preserving by using that preserve command. We're going to have two new assignments. Uh, we got assignment six, which is called attendance list, uh, which is going to be for just writing down kids who are here in attendance that day. Uh, and assignment seven, which is going to be a sort of a laptop sign in and sign out uh, thing. You'll see what that looks like in a second. We've got two new vocab words today, redim and preserve. If you want to merge that into a single vocab entry, that's fine by me. Just make sure you're taking notes on those two topics. Cool, that's it.